Hello everybody. Bitwig 5 has been announced and there is already a public beta version available. If you have an active upgrade plan, you can test it and already use it to your hearts alike. And we are currently already in a third round of the beta. And it also comes with improvements to the API, so the application programming interface, which I can use to improve the Driven by Moss support for tons of controllers. So first, let's have a look at what is is new. I'm pretty sure you watched my previous video about all the new features of Bitwig 5, so you have seen a new browser. Sadly, the API is not yet changed in that regard. You can still use the browser interface on your hardware device with this current implementation, but the first column will be empty and you will not have the different pages as before, so the tabs. So this needs to be changed first, and I hope this will be in the next bit around and we can have then a look at that and also I can use it to improve it. Same is sadly true for the project and track remote controls. I could already start working at track but there's something missing for project so I will wait till this is finished. But what you can already do is if you select it in Bitwig, so I can show you here on the push, but this works the same with all different controllers. So if you go here to a device and let's open that, let's just, for example, map something and then simply go into the device mode, then this page will show up. Same for the project. If you go here and map something, this will also show up here in the device. But from the device, you cannot trigger to show this screen currently. So this will be hopefully implemented in the next round. And then I can also support it here on the controller. So, and this is a big thing we will later look into more detail is all these alternative options to launch, release and stop functions on the session view. So clips, alternate start and scene. And this is already working nicely and I am nearly implemented in each and every controller I support, which was quite a nightmare to do, but it's a huge improvement for live performance. A very little change is that we have now a state if the project is saved or not. For example, on the Mackie control, there is a save button and this does now show the state if it's saved or not. And there were also some improvements before in a Bitwig 4 line already that you have now sense on sense and also that you can disable and enable sense, which was currently not available in the API, but now here with Bitwig 5 and the API 18, it's also available. This and enabling sense works fine, but sadly accessing the send track on a send crashes currently. So I'm also hoping for that, that this get fixed in the next beta round. And then we hopefully can also use sense on sense from the controller. Also a little oversight in the last 4.4 was that you have now clap devices, but you cannot add them. You can add VSTs and the like, but not claps. And this is now also here. And now we'll also show that here with the push that we can also add now clap devices. I cannot show each and every controller which I support, which would take a day, I guess. So I will show you everything here on a push, which implements all the currently working and available features. Check out the change list, which is always available in the manual. And there you can see all the changes. Let's have a look and let's start with the push. And as I said, the session view is the most important thing, which got a lot of improvements. And I already showed that in the previous video about the Bitwig 5 options that you have now for all clips, as well as for the scenes, these options to have an all alternate setting for starting and also there are different settings what you want to have happen when you release the pad here and the default setting is already quite helpful because for example there is the unsequenced option if you do this alternate thing and as well as that you jump back to your previous playing clip so what you can do with that for example is you can start a scene and then you can say you just want to jump for a second to that pad and for that you're on the push you use now the shift button so keep that pressed we jump to that other clip and then if you release it we are back to the previous scene there's no long press anymore before that you could select the clip with long pressing this is now on the select button so use now select 
to select any clip here in the grid and to go to the birds view, which was currently on the shift button. You press the shift button first and then select, and then you're in this bird's eye view where you can quickly navigate in this 8.8 .8 grid of clips. And yeah, it's faster to work your way around. You cannot press select first because then you are here in a select mode. So think about just press shift first, then select, and then you're here in this other mode. There's things with the alternate start works also for scenes. So if you look here on the scenes, you have the option to override the settings as well for all the clips in the scene. And also the default setting is quite helpful. So if we start the scene again, and then you can also use here the shift button to temporarily switch to this other scene. And when I release it, it jumps back to the first scene. And the same works for stop. So we can stop all playing clips with a stop clip. So everything stops and this works also for an alternate setting. So this one stops it in alternate setting depending on the scene launch settings, which means, for example, if we don't have quantization here in alternate setting, we also don't have it on stop. So let's start that again. And I can now also use that with shift to trigger alternative option. And if you do so, it will stop immediately because this is also not sequence. Great improvements for live performance. You can, for example, have a break on a second scene, quickly jump to the break, then release here the button and then have your normal clip playing before. So very, very helpful addition. You can also use the stop function on individual clips, not only on the scene. So you use that by pressing the stop clip button. So let's first start something. Let's go here back to the track. You need to be in a track view so we can have here access to the track buttons. And if you press the buttons above the track, it simply stops the clip in time, as we had before. But if I press it below, then it will execute the alternative stop setting, and this stops the clip immediately. So much for the session view. I also mentioned that we have this little new option that we can also toggle the enablement of a delay. And this works like this. We have here a delay, have here the mixer. Or let's even go here to the mix view. There is easier to see. So I change here the volume of this delay and I can also disable it. And this works by pressing and then again select and then simply touch the knob and then it will go offline. And if you touch it again with shift and select press, it will be active again. Might be also helpful for live performance. For example, you add delay to snare, crazy delay for a break, and then you simply disable the delay again and have the pure snare sound. And as I also mentioned, you can add now clap devices. And I have here this add track option here on a push that you can pre-select devices you want to add. And let's have a look at that in the settings. And there on the push settings, you can say what plugins you want to load on this. Let's, for example, yeah, why not have here Bacilla as an example, as a last instrument. And this should have shown up here. And if I click that, we get now a Bacilla instance in the clap version, as you can see up here. So this is now also working nicely. A feature I did not mention in my overview video, which is quite helpful, is that you can set now the color for your clip area. So you see here is red, the clip area, which is currently covered here on the push. And I can change now this color. For example, I can say I would prefer to have this in why not have it here in purple? And it doesn't look purple because I have other controllers active as well. So if we move here the area of the push, you see now the push area is now in purple. 
So that's it. That's the first overview of what we can do with beta 3. Also, the driven by MOS implementation has to be considered to be beta. So don't use that in any productive way. Just use it for experimentation. And I just wanted to release it because many, many people already ask about it if they can have the support for Bitwig 5 and tinker around with it. And so here it is. Enjoy and don't forget to make some funky music. <laughs> 